Hello, and welcome to this walkthrough on how to understand and use ACLID's aggregated data set, a streamlined resource designed to present a simplified, accessible snapshot of global trends in conflict. The aggregated data set includes global data updated each week. Each row represents all ACLID events recorded in a given Admin 1, or the first level of Administrative Geographic Division, for a specific week. This weekly aggregation allows users to track changes over time and across geographic space with ease. Aggregated data can be used seamlessly with pivot tables, in dashboards, and mapping tools, whether you are analyzing political violence or comparing demonstration activity across provinces, the dataset is designed to help you generate insights quickly. Let's walk through the structure of the dataset, column by column. Week. The first column corresponds to a single week, starting on Saturday and ending on Friday. Region. The region indicates the broad geographic grouping, such as the Middle East or South Asia, which is useful for comparative analysis. Country. The country column indicates the country in which the events occurred. Admin 1. The first order administrative division, which indicates the state, province, department, or government level, according to the country in the previous column. Next, we have the disorder type. ACLID categorizes all events into three overarching disorder types, which are political violence, demonstrations, and strategic developments. Nested within the disorder type are ACLID's event types, which are six categories that include battles, explosions slash remote violence, violence against civilians, protests, riots, and strategic developments. Sub-event types. Within each event type, there are several respective sub-event types. This is the most granular classification of events, which identify the specific forms of disorder, such as abductions slash forced disappearances or peaceful protests. These classifications are hierarchical. The structure allows for flexibility in filtering for analysis at broad, medium, or granular levels of detail on the type of event. Next, we have the total number of discrete events that were recorded in the Admin 1 area during the week for the specified sub-event type for that row. Following this, we have a conservative estimate of fatalities across the events included in the count. This is an aggregation of fatalities for all relevant events in the event count column. Next, we have the population exposure metric developed with WorldPop. This column provides the best estimate of how many people were exposed to the events listed based on their proximity. Please note that these values are not cumulative and should not be summed. Use averages or max values in your pivot tables instead. For more population exposure statistics, use the calculator tool on our website. Finally, we have the centroid latitude and longitude columns. These coordinates represent the geographic center of the Admin 1 area and are designed for use in mapping. Please note that these do not reflect the precise location of individual events, but still enable valuable geographic analysis. Now let's explore how to filter the dataset and use pivot tables in Excel to gather some insights in the aggregated data. To filter the data, use the filter dropdowns in Excel to view a specific country, region, sub-event type, or time period. To create a pivot table, select all the data, go to Insert Pivot Table, drag the fields into the row and column areas. For values, choose event count or fatalities, depending on your research question. For population exposure, summarize by average, minimum, or maximum. Do not sum these values. For example, here is a pivot table charting the deadliest sub-event types in the Middle East region. And here we can compare weekly protest activity across Admin 1 areas in Syria over the past year. This data can also be used with mapping software to the Admin 1 centroid coordinates. Now let's walk through a concrete example of how this data set can be used to answer a question. 
such as how has the intensity of conflict, as measured by total events recorded, evolved over the past year in Iraq and Syria? To explore this question, we can create a pivot table in Excel that compares weekly event counts in each country over the past year. We'll begin by inserting a pivot table using the data set. Select the data and go to the Insert tab, then select Pivot Table, choose New Worksheet, and click OK. Now let's add the Week column to the Rows field. This gives us weekly data, which we'll leave grouped by month. Next, we'll filter the data so we're only comparing the data for Iraq and Syria. Drag Country to the Filters area and click the Filter drop-down to select the countries in the pivot table. Add Country to the Columns field to display these labels in the pivot table. Next, we'll add the Event Counts column to the Values field to measure conflict intensity. We can also create a quick chart to graph this data to better visualize the patterns of event counts over the past year to compare Syria and Iraq over time, or add other filters, such as event types, to look for more information on the more specific types of violence driving conflict in these contexts. Using event and sub-event types, you can further explore which types of violence are on the rise, such as airstrikes, armed clashes, or violence against civilians. In addition to trend analysis, this dataset can also be used to create maps of conflict patterns at the first administrative unit, such as the province level, using the centroid coordinates or geographic names provided. A centroid is simply the geographic center point of a province or state. Using these values, you can create a map that visualizes patterns in event counts, fatalities, or population exposure summarized at the first administrative unit level. You can then create maps such as this example, mapping fatality counts in Syria, to see how fatalities in a conflict are dispersed geographically over the past year. Now let's review some final tips to guide your analysis. Consider your research question and apply filters thoughtfully. You can explore changes over time, across geographies, or within specific disorder types. The data is updated weekly for the previous week. Keep your dataset updated to monitor trends. For impact assessments, consider combining population exposure data with sub-event types, which can help you quantify how many people are affected. To recap, ACLID's aggregated dataset allows you to filter by country, region, week, or event types, analyze trends over time and space to the level of the week and the first administrative division, map data geographically using centroid coordinates, and explore population exposure to political violence and disorder. To learn more about how to register for access or to explore our full methodology, visit ACLED's knowledge base and access support page.